quantitative destruction. What is mm -hmm. that? We talked about quantitative easing mm -hmm. several several times on the show. So I'm assuming everybody knows what quantitative easing is. Mm -hmm. But what is quantitative destruction and what should investors be doing in this market? Um, quantitative destruction is the easing of capital um, to prevent from us going to a hyperinflation or a stagflation situation. So basically the Fed has to create a recession to slow things from continuously growing at the rate that they are now. I was reading an article, uh, rent in Idaho has gone up 30% this year, Idaho. Kanye's not there, <laughs> Kardashians clearly aren't there. Shout out but to now, Kanye. Yeah, shout out to Kanye. Um, but the rent and the price of everything has gone up so much this is the only weapon that they have to slow down inflation. And some people are asking, are we going to have a soft landing? Anytime that you have to try and cause a crash, the landing is never soft, especially for black people. So um, quantitative destruction is the, the opposite of quantitative easing, where they were continuously pumping money into the market. Now they have to slow up the money that is uh, going out into the market to bring things back down to a normal level. So um, in this market, I told stock club members this earlier, but this is the time when the real investors come out. We've talked about it endlessly. Troy said it a bunch of times. Patience pays. You're going. Please write this down. Your at least half the market is going to come down thirty percent. The worst companies are going to die fifty to seventy three percent off from the all time highs from November. So in October, when I was telling you guys, hey, a crash is coming. Enjoy. That was for two reasons. For traders. If you've been shorting these last couple months, bonds, equities, you've been killing. But for those of you who missed out on 2020, even part of 2021, lo and behold, we're at 2019 levels. And this is why I say, even when people are making a ton of money and rubbing it in your face and acting like black youngster and be like, I got gains in 2020 and you didn't. The same spots that a lot of your friends were <laughs> able to get in in 2021, you now can get in. Please put in chat, patience always pays clap it up for Troy like <laughs> this is the name of the game and if I can be just incredibly honest those who are not willing to wait are going to get destroyed by most people who will and it's like let, let's say if we're playing like 21 and 31 right most people if there's 80 people on the court are going to knock themselves out buying at bad prices just mark off from the high 50 percent most companies that you heard about Lucid, and I'm not picking on them, but Lucid, Rivian, Peloton, we're seeing Netflix fall apart. Probably half of the S&P 500 or NASDAQ is going to be chopped in half. You're going to get a chance to be able to buy in at 50% off, and you're going to be incredibly happy that you're a patient in doing so. So, Ian, real quick, just a real question. So when you talk about quantitative destruction, we talk, so when we, when we talk about the Fed rate and these basis points get raised, is this now part of the, that's part of the equation? And if so... Now that we've seen the S and P, I mean, drop, and we've obviously we, the Nasdaq is was twenty three percent down from its highs. Told you. Uh, yeah. Is it being priced in already? I mean, uh, yes and no. I mean, we we know that we knew that it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. We knew quantitative easing had to stop at some point. But if you have no net buyers, and you have more net sellers, and now we're seeing institutions, we'll talk about it later. They're shorting and buying puts like crazy. Like, shout out to my put short in chat if you've been killing to the downside. So, until the Fed says, hey, okay, this is when we're going to level out. Here's where we're going to no longer begin to or continue to raise rates. That's when the market will stabilize. Now, if you're terrified out of your mind, and let's say you have a big amount of capital in the market, what should you do? Don't look at your account for the next 90 days. Um, please don't sell. And I said this early in Stock Club, but Anyone that I knew that was trading stocks in 07, 08, 09, 2010, if they can go back, all of them unanimously, unless they made $30 million, wish they held those positions. Don't get out now. If you got in at bad prices, you can average down probably 20% lower. And the S&P is only down 13%. It could be a hell of a lot worse. Right. But now is the time to really look for the areas in which to load the boat. And when the Fed says, hey, okay, this is where we're going to level off, that's when you'll see us start to take off to the upside. So the Fed, they just announced they're going to raise interest rates again this week. Uh, I think tomorrow, right? Yeah. Right. I think it's it like tomorrow 30, 36 or Wednesday. hours. I think Wednesday. Okay. I think Wednesday. Okay. So how is that? How is that going to affect the market? Going to slap that bond market back down more. 
I mean, we were talking about this since August of the bond market topped August of 2020. And then when you have the government buying the bonds, and if you guys look at the chart and maybe we can pull it up next week, the Fed and the government stopped buying equities at the exact top of the market. We're just in a, in a tricky situation. Um, the easy gains, I saw a great quote earlier that the euphoria era is now over. So now you have two cycles. You have momentum investors and traders. Mm -hmm. And then what I define myself as as a catastrophic investor. So I want to buy a house in a neighborhood with good comps that just got set on fire. The, all the buildings are burning right now, right? So I want to wait to that 50% off their value. Does it suck to hold even a winner? Like Apple's down 13%? Sucks. But I could be down 80%, 70% in Peloton or something else. So hold on for the long term. If you play this out for a year or two, you'll be incredibly happy. But these are the levels uh, where you want to buy. And we are just actually entering the areas of the market where we should have been if there wasn't excessive money being pumped into the market. Yeah. And, and this is one of those months like traditionally May is one, uh, April is a month where we see, you know, the, the S&P gain and we see the Nasdaq. It's a great month for trading. And May, obviously, you know, with uh, Memorial Day is usually the start of the summer and we start to see the trend down in trading. The volume isn't the same. Yeah. And so it's almost looking like the storm is here, but. Oh, it's raining hard. <laughs> Get your galoshes out. Yeah. yeah. There's some signs here that it, it could get a little bit more bumpy before it gets bright outside. And then, as Obama said when he was in uh, office, the Democrats can get shellacked in the midterms. Midterms, right? So, so I mean, I, honestly, we have like nine months until like the storm is like technically over. So, but all right, if the Democrats lose midterms, and then let's say the Republicans actually take over, you know, the House and Senate, and then let's say hypothetically they win the presidency in two years. Mm -hmm. We 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 know that um, most recessions happen under Republican leadership. Mm -hmm. Historical fact. It's not yes. a political bias. I'm I'm actually a registered independent, but most recessions happen. The economy does worse when Republicans are on, in office. That's just a fact. Yes. So <clears throat> that's not encouraging. Another sign. Yeah, and we, and that was one of the things we said at the top of the year was like, yo, midterm elections. This is going to be key. This is going to be key. How does that affect the market? We kind of broke it down, but like the facts that you're saying right now are how it can affect the, the economy. And so it, all these signs are, are part of how you come up with, when we talk about do your research, like add all these things into it and say, all right, mm -hmm. now I can make an educated decision on, on what I'm going to do. So when I was in third grade, right, I used to take my little papers and I was supposed to do my homework. Shout out to all my FCA family. And I would hide them and not do my homework, right? <laughs> and then report card would come out. And then who was my third grade teacher? Ms. Palmer, Ms. Joe, one of them, um, should tell my mom and dad, like, hey, Ian's smart, but he wasn't doing his homework. And then my dad and mom would be like, listen, whatever you put it in the, in the wash, it's going to come out in the rents. So there's only a certain amount of time that we can borrow money at a low interest rate and think every company on earth is amazing, even the ones with no revenue and terrible net profit. This reminds me a lot of 2091 all over again, kind of combined together. I'll say all that to say, when real estate is at Exorbitant levels, venture capital, which that market is getting devastated, uh, is at exorbitant levels. So is the stock market. So is the angel market. The PPP money dried up. The Fed was kind of treating their ability to print like it. a scammer in Miami with the PPP loan. <laughs> How long did we think this was going to last? I mean, I try to tell you guys from the, from the very beginning, like, it's only so long that you can print capital at this cheap, borrow at this cheap of a rate before we have devastation. I told you before, they are allowing people to make money over the last two years because of the devastation that's to come. My graduates from my school being Forbes, backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>